Hello welcome to Movie Musters, Magic Makers, a recap of BMF Season 3 Episode 2. Terry juggles keeping BMF and his family in Detroit as Meech concentrates on growing BMF into Atlanta. Terry searches for ways to bring in money for BMF, while Meech provides connections in Columbia. 1. My husband is still boom. The beginning of the show is quite intriguing. T is thrilled to move in with Markeisha after successfully packing everything he had from his parents' house but she informs him that she doesn't think it's safe for them to live together. T grudgingly tells Markeisha that he's okay with her taking a break, even though it's not what he wants to hear. 2. The plug became locked. T and Hoop had just received some extremely horrible news, so T was already feeling rather odd. After K-9 turned him over, Cena, their Colombian plug, was arrested in St. Martin and extradited back to Detroit. Two untrustworthy Mexicans arrived to the Flannery residence's front door, saying they were searching for Dimitri. They nearly attempted to break in when Charles informed them that they were at the wrong house, but fortunately, Charles was holding a hammer, so they were forced to back down. 3. These Migos are who? T gave Meech a call to let him know what had happened with Cena. Meech gave his younger brother instructions to explore Detroit for potential fines. He followed suit in Atlanta. Charles entered T's new eatery in a rage as the two talked about their next move or moves. Taking Terry's phone, he angrily confronted his oldest son, telling him that the next time, he would disclose his number to the Mexicans. Meech and T talked about how funny it was that two Mexicans arrived at their crib on the same day that their plug was detained after pop left. Meech tells T to get them a new plug rather than focusing on how bad things are. 4. Seeking Remedies Meech revealed his future ambitions to Duffy and Stax during their conversation. To find out if he could still use Dice's network, he wanted to speak with their representatives. Furthermore, he intended to meet Glock's plug. He reasoned that if they are both employed by the same plug, Glock will be forced to put a stop to their conflict and let money be the only priority. 5. A Hard Place and a Rock Gloria, Kevin's mother, is introduced to us for the first time in the series. She is angry that their son is incarcerated and holds Bryant responsible. The two are having a really instructive talk. We learn that she didn't have time for Kevin and ultimately allowed him to live with Bryant. It is also evident that Bryant is going through a difficult period. He makes it quite clear by saying that he needs her assistance and her giving him money. 6. A book is not judged by its cover. Detectives Jin and Amberson talk about their minimal to non-existent progress in the Saint murder case while dining at her father's restaurant. Jin explains how the residents of the areas don't assist them because they believe that the police aren't doing enough to support them. When Jin presents her father to her new partner, he is taken aback to learn that Amberson is also a Mandarin speaker. Just two minutes prior, Amberson had explicitly stated that Jin didn't know her, as Jin had believed that because she was raised in the suburbs, she wouldn't be eligible for some things. 7. Drawing without drawing lines Jin informed her father that Bryant was apprehended when he inquired about the whereabouts of her former boyfriend. Jin informed him that Bryant had been discovered painting too much outside of the lines. In response, Han said that drawing beyond the lines can occasionally add interest to an image. 8. Already, this partnership is very interesting. 9. Searching for a new plug. Sterl informs T that he has arranged a meeting with a plug outside the city, in the burbs, while K-9 has the entire city on lockdown. It wasn't just them that was searching for something fresh. At a new church location, Charles, Lucille, and Nicole are spotted. The parents see Lucil chatting to a boy who appears to attend her school when she registers for a community service program for her and Nicole. 10. The issue with Henrietta We are introduced to Henrietta Henry Andreas, the new plug. As soon as Henry nearly has to take a man out during their card game, she makes it clear that she is not to be trifled with. Henry tells T that she already knows who they are and that she thinks their movement is amazing as T introduces himself. She claims she can work 28 hours a day when T informs her that they need to work. T feels that the quantity is excessive. In response, she said that it would not be long before T's clientele began to search. She consistently guarantees to include a pound of cannabis with each Kai ordered. T grudgingly accepted, but he didn't even shake her hands because Peaches' arrival diverted their attention. T meets the Mexicans that stopped up at his family's house early in the episode face to face a bit later in the show. When they inquire for Dimitri once more, T responds that Meech is the new boss and currently resides in Atlanta. He informs the Mexicans that Meech is no one's errand boy, and that in order to get in touch with him, they must travel down south. 11. Terry Rap BMF Season 3 Episode Stills with a Lot of Cap 
Ft returns to Lawanda's place after it appears that he has broken up with Markeisha. He informs his infant mother that he and Markeisha have called it quits, and that he would like to spend a few days living with her again since he has come to the conclusion that their family comes first. Strangely enough, T and Charles have a very touching chat when T returns to the Flannery home later on to collect some clothes. Although T is aware that his father criticizes him, he assures Charles that he would never hold him accountable for the mistakes he made. T informs his father that everything he has ever done in relation to the game was done for their family. Every decision Charles makes affects the people he loves and the people he loves, he tells his son. He went on to explain that the love he receives from the game can never compare to that of his people. Detective Jin ran the license plates of a car that they received an anonymous tip about somewhere in Detroit. It transpired that Cuts, a paw boy, was the owner of the vehicle. The paw boys were permitted to go investigate the matter because they are not under DRANO's control. Amberson acknowledges that she used to utilize narcotics during their staking out scene later in the show. She did them to stay numb to everything since she detested them and her life had become dismal. 12. Information needed. Meech connects with Lucky, then Meech leads Angel outside to dinner. Meech is forthright in informing her that he requires some details from her. She replies, letting him know that she values secrecy, and that providing information may land her in serious legal problems. She is about to depart after realizing what Meech wants, but Meech stops her. They eat together and wind up learning a lot about one another. Angel talks about how she got to Atlanta and started dating Greeny. When Meech sincerely expresses interest in her and she informs him that she has met many males, but that he is different, the two get closer. 13. You're not like us. We are introduced to Lucille's friend from high school. The event liaison is a physician named Morris Montclair. From the moment Lucille first sees him, it is clear that they once had something and that she is attracted to him. Nicole witnesses her mother's entire demeanor shift while the two adults converse. Morris returns to the celebration later and offers to take Lucille out to dinner while Nicole is chatting with the boy from her school. Although she reluctantly declines the offer, it's obvious that she's giving it serious thought. It is revealed to us that Lucille was once taken from Morris by Charles. Later that evening, Lucille tried to strike up a discussion about boys, safety, etc. Nicole soon came to the conclusion that her mother's advice had less to do with her personally and more to do with her relationship with Morris. When Charles tried to compliment Lucille in her room back at their house, she immediately brushed him off. She smiled a little and took the card Morris gave her, which had his number on it, as soon as he left the room. 16. Dangerous equals desperate. Detective Bryant informs Frank Blaze Andreas, an old buddy, that he needs a favor. He informs Blaze that he cannot afford competent attorneys for his son. He makes reference to quick money and is aware of Blaze's connections. Following their game, Bryant departs following their chess game between the two longtime friends. Blaze inquires about the opinion of an elderly gentleman who appears to be either his mentor or an older relative. In response, the older man says that a man in desperation can be dangerous. 17. Blaze is actually connected. Henry enters shortly after Bryant leaves, and it is revealed that Blaze is Henry's father. He talks about how he'd heard she was attempting to expand. He continues by saying that she needs to exercise self-control because whatever she does is a reflection of him. He made sure she understood that she still represented him and that she should be treated with decency. He informed her at the end of their talk that he was sending someone to work for her organization. 18. This family tree is crazy so far 19. When the plug finds you greater than Meech and Duffy arrive at Santiago's house to discover dead Miami killers. Just as they are about to leave, someone calls Meech and informs them that it's his name, Loco, that the meeting with Santiago was a farce and that they have to leave. He goes on to explain that he was Ty Washington's plug. Meech realizes that it was an ambush and shots start to fire. The Colombians take care of the MKs fairly quickly. Loco explains that Cena didn't snitch on them and that he actually recommended him to Loco because of how fast he moved weight. Javier reveals that it was Terry who led them to him. They then decide to give Meech 250 kiss to begin with. Terry and the lads are furious that they decided to collaborate with Henry back in Detroit. They talk about how her father, Blaze, is a strong operator and was once a police officer. Meech calls T while they are speaking and informs him of the recent events. Meech essentially tells T that the new plug would belong to them both, which resolves T's issue with Henry. To inform Henry that they would no longer be taking weight from her, T and Sterl went to see her. She believes that an agreement is a deal, which is why she is furious. And Haughty T reminds him of what she said to him earlier about how all of her clients call them. Henry and Peaches have sex again right after that. She murders her in cold blood this time. I spoke to your plug, she informs her as she shoots her. You are outside of me now. 
but I required a plug that was entirely heavy. You believed we had an agreement, then. 20. Feds observing Fasho. Duffy remarks that he believes Angel set them up with the MKs, and that it's odd that she isn't at the strip club when they are in Atlanta. As they converse, Tina, Monique's younger cousin, arrives. Meech tells her that he is pleased with her and that she can call him for anything. Greeny appears and informs Meech that drinks are on the house immediately after that. He says he's grateful to Meech for looking after Angel, but it was clear he was contradicting himself. T, Sterl, and Hoop have dinner with La Wanda back in Detroit. They are eating when Cuts appears and joins them. All the while, Detectives Jin and Amberson are receiving video footage of them. Meech and Loco share a drunken moment after the club the following morning, as the show comes to a close. They both talk about how difficult growing up was for them and how desperate they were. Loco declared to Meech that the two new business partners were in love with one another and that they were family. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for watching.